Okay, so let's go ahead and make some assumptions. We'll set up a little scenario that where we have either rejected or we failed to reject, and we will make a conclusion from this. All right, so I'm just going to make up some, some numbers for us that we can actually use. So we're going to say that we're doing this, uh, comparing these two high schools. Maybe we're comparing uh, scores, like ACT scores or something. We're looking at the difference between these two schools. Maybe, maybe something like that. OK, so I am going to say that we've got, let me set up a null and alternative real quick. And we'll have the null is that the means of the two schools are the same. And we'll set it up that the schools are, we'll start off with not equal to. And I'll show you how we can handle a greater than or less than. It's not too hard. We just need some place to start. We'll, do, we'll have an alpha of 0 0.05. And we'll also include in We'll say that we got a T score. We'll say that we got a T with, I don't know, we'll do like 50 degrees of freedom. And that equaled 2.1. And this is going to give us a P value of about. Zero point zero four and we'll go from there okay so we are going to say what's well, going to take me a big chunk of space in order to do this okay so the first things first with how we have these guys right now we're going to say that we are going to um, we are going to reject the null hypothesis because our p-value is less than alpha all right so let's try to get this all put up together so we can say that we have collected sufficient, sufficient evidence. OK, and once we say that, we need to provide the evidence. So we need to say t50 equals 2.1 comma p equals 0 0.0. Four, and I'm going to let us do it one of two ways. You can either say that the alpha in the sentence, or I'm just going to put up my alpha right here so it doesn't encumber the rest of my sentence. To reject the claim that the ACT Uh, and not just that the ACT scores, but that the true mean. Got to make sure that I'm referencing a mu, the mu of these two, under the true mean AT, AT, ACT scores for the two schools are the same. All right, so this is like my first step. I've said how much evidence I've collected. I've reported it to reject the claim. And the baseline claim is that these two schools are the same right here. And instead, conclude that, OK. Now here, after we've rejected the null hypothesis, we can conclude the alternative. So my alternative right now is just that they are different. I can't say which one is bigger or smaller at this point uh, because I only said that they are not equal to, is that they are different from one another. Now had I said instead that it was I had stated something like this of being less than 0. All right, if, if mu1 minus mu2 is less than 0, it means that mu1 is smaller than 
mu2. So if I did that, I would ab I'd be able to make a different conclusion. I'd be able to say that uh, we have prairie as one, so that prairie Prairie's true mean ACT scores are less than that of summit. Okay, so that's if I had less than. Now if I had greater than zero, That means that I think that mu1, the only way for this to be greater than 0 is if mu1 is bigger than mu2. So if it was like this, then I'd say instead of less than, I could say greater than and that of summit. All right, so for this first part of our conclusion, the only thing that I'm able to put in this conclusion part is whatever I have stated in my alternative hypothesis. So this is why it's kind of nice to do like a one tail is because if we find significant results, we can say which one we think is bigger than the other. Um, if we don't know what's going on though, if we just think something is different, then that's the only thing that we can conclude is that they are different from one another. Now the question would be, like, well, how much bigger or how much different? And that's why if we find significant results, we need to include a confidence interval. Now, let's say instead, just suppose that the p-value that we got here wasn't 0.04, that it was 0.08. There's kind of a different method that, that we go about doing this. Uh, so what we can do is instead, if we have this, where we would be failing to reject the null hypothesis, we wouldn't need this conclusion part. All we would need is to here. And we would say insufficient evidence to reject the claim that the true mean ACT scores for the two schools are the same. And we'd be done here because we weren't able to show that there was a difference. And if we weren't able to show that there were a difference, we were going to continue under the assumption that these two are the same. So we could include that if you wanted. We could also say that we will continue, continue under the assumption that the two schools have the same true mean ACT scores. It's not necessary to do that, uh, but you can go ahead and say that this is what we're going to do. We're going to continue under the assumption that these two are the same because we couldn't show that they were different uh, at the alpha level that we have established. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back though. Let's go back to having an alpha level of 0.04. Let's go back to that guy. And we'll go back to our first version where we had it as not equal to. So we'll get rid of that guy and put it back at not equal to. Okay, are the same and conclude. That they are in fact different. Okay then we'd need some sort of confidence interval. So let's say that I got us a confidence interval, confidence interval, and we're going to do this at, oh, I don't know, we'll do 
five comma ten. Okay, so once we've gotten this part done, now we can go back and fall upon our confidence interval uh, statements again. Um, they're a little bit different though because we're not talking about just a single measurement, we're talking about this difference between the two. So we can say that we are 95% confident that the true mean mean scores or true mean ACT scores for now remember we need to talk about since these are both positive we're going to say that the only way for these to be positive is if mu1 really is bigger than mu2 so we're going to talk about mu1 so it's, it's going to be prairie but the true mean ACT scores for prairie Prairie are somewhere between between five and ten points greater than that. of summit. All right, so we just basically tack on this confidence interval statement. And this is what we call a post hoc test. Let me circle that real quick. This is our post hoc. And we make this statement after we do our conclusion. So this is what we'd use if we did a two-tailed test. Now let's say that we had done a one-tailed test. Let's say that instead we had just said that this is going to be greater than zero. And this was then something like six infinity. It would then still go that we are 95% confident that the true mean ACT scores for Prairie are then we could erase this out and say at least Ninety-five percent confident that the true mean ACT scores for Prairie are at least six points greater than that of Summit. So this is how we handle a conclusion for our means. Let's put that up here. This is for our means. And in our next video, I'll show you how we can do this exact same thing, but just handle it with uh, with our proportions instead.